two years I'd been locked away. Not a day went by I didn't pray to God. But I knew even he wouldn't forgive me for what I'd done. See, God only has time for those who deserve his mercy. I just didn't qualify. But then one day I had this visitor. I knew Calypso by reputation. You don't spend 10 years on the force without knowing every dirt bag in Midtown. Seems he wanted me in his contest. He said if I won, he'd ease my pain. My God! He knew! How could he have known? Calypso said if I won the game, I'd get a chance to undo the big mistake that was eating at my soul. Redemption. That's a big thing to offer a man without a hope in hell. How can I refuse? As I drifted away, the torment began again. The same torment I'd endured a thousand nights and days before. I began to remember. It happened a couple of years back. We were out across from the Northside Apartments. There'd been reports of terrorist activity in the building. When we got there, we found some kind of doomsday cult had set up shop inside. We were sent there to take them out. These guys were real psychos, desperate as hell, holed up like rats in a cage. But now their little hideaway was a kill zone, and I had them right in my sights. I'd dealt with a lot of dirt bags before, but for some reason, this was different. All units open fire! Open fire! Shoot the kill! All these years, trying to make a difference, and for what? so that we could arrest these scum suckers and watch them walk free the same afternoon? My rage got the better of me. I couldn't focus. I wanted to send these killers to hell where they belonged. I got them. But not before I made the biggest mistake of my life. I'd let my emotions cloud my judgment. It cost me cost someone else even more. Oh my God. What had I done? Those people were dead, and it was all my fault. There was only one way out. But that way was closed. I was going to have to live with it for the rest of my life, and nothing I could do would ever take away the pain. Until now. You're in violation of Midtown City Code 4432. Step out of your vehicle and surrender peacefully. Time's up. won the contest. Now it was time to see if the rumors were true. Did Calypso really have the power to give me a second chance? He asked if I really wanted a second chance. If I understood the risks. But I wasn't going to screw up twice. This time, it was all going to work out. I demanded my prize. And just like that, I was back. I knew what to do this time. I had to contain my anger. I had to focus. That little girl was going to be safe. It was my sworn duty, both to her and to myself. He's drawing a weapon. All units open fire. Open fire. Shoot to kill. I made sure every single bullet found the right target this time. 
That dirtbag went down like a puppet with his strings cut. Terrorist is down. Terrorist is down. Great shooting agent. Second team, move it. But it wasn't over. Not until I knew those people were safe. They were shaken but alive. Calypso had done it. I never thought it could be like... Units, target is not down. Target is still hot. I was so close to making it right. Agent! Agent Stone, report in! Are you hit? In here, you lose track of time. Hours melt into days. Days turn into years. Thirty years in my case. After so much time in solitary, I should get better. But in my heart, I always knew there was no cure for what happened to me. But I kept on hoping. I knew if I waited long enough, I'd get revenge against the man who destroyed my... But I could only wait so long. Every day, the vision got worse. Soon I wouldn't be able to tell reality from my nightmares. But then, my life changed. He called himself Calypso. He said he ran a contest. Winner take all. In my case, first prize meant getting even all my sanity. How could I refuse? Agreed to play. Put us into some stinking hole, 25 feet below the ground. Benny was in bad shape. I didn't know how long he was gonna hold out. Seems like forever I was screaming for someone to come and help him. Then one day, we had a visitor. The guy was an advisor to the Vietnamese. And he had his own unique idea of torture. Starvation. Benny was on his last legs, and I wasn't far behind. Five days without any food will bring any man to the edge. And the advisor said the only way I was going to survive was to eat. He gave me a knife and started laughing. He said if I wanted food, I'd have to make do with whatever I could find in the hole. I tried to block out what was happening. I knew what he wanted me to do. But there was no way I was going to give him the satisfaction. Benny died two days later. I couldn't look at him. I didn't even want to think about it. It's amazing the things you'll do to survive. I think Benny would have understood. They say the mind bends and twists in order to deal with the horrors of life. I think my mind bent so much it snapped in two. When a platoon of GIs freed me two weeks later, they tried to take the helmet off. 
I killed four of them before they took me down. After that, they shipped me back to the States and put me in the asylum. But now I have a chance to get even with the men who pushed me over the edge and made Benny die. went to see Calypso. Turns out he was a man of his word. He told me it was time for a reunion. After all these years, the advisor looked exactly the same. He didn't know who I was, but I recognized him. I'd been seeing his face in my nightmares for 30 years. Calypso had one more special prize for me. Dinner for one. Thirty years is a long time to be locked away. You get kinda tired of asylum food. But after all this time, something new was on the menu. As much as I hated to admit it, over the years I developed a special craving. for human flesh. <laughs> 